Hey, what you say, food family? Mike here, and welcome back to the channel for another great culinary adventure. Today, we're headed down to Louisiana in the Gulf Coast to create one of my favorite classic Creole comfort dishes, shrimp etouffee. Now, of course, so we don't offend our local cooks down there, we're going to be starting ours off with a homemade seafood stock to really give it that great flavor. So if that sounds good to you, stick around, and I'll show you how it's done. Let's get cooking. Alright folks, we're going to start today's shrimp etouffee recipe out by making a simple seafood stock, just like I mentioned in the introduction. Now that being said, the key thing here is remember, when you're in the kitchen cooking, save those scraps. Those celery tops, the ends of carrots, the stems of parsley and cilantro, leftover onion, peels, all that stuff is great to make stocks with. Just put it in a bag, throw it in your freezer, keep filling that bag up. When it's full, make a stock. It could be a chicken stock, a seafood stock, beef stock, vegetable stock, whatever you want. It's a simple way to fortify the flavors of any dish rather than just using water in that, recipe, in that cooking recipe. So that being said, today we're making seafood stock, so I'm going heavily with the seafood. Last time I made a batch of lobster mac and cheese. I saved those lobster shells in the pot. Earlier today, I peeled the shrimp for this shrimp etouffee recipe, so I got the shrimp shells in here, along with some parsley and cilantro stems, just some leftover stuff that was in the fridge that was about to go bad anyway. All right, that was about two pounds of shrimp, so you're gonna want at least two, two to three pounds of shrimp shells if you're just using shrimp shells alone. Other than that, like I said, celery. Got a couple sticks here, some tops, some of the leaves. You know, the stuff you usually throw away, great for making stock. Got a handful of garlic cloves here. We're just going to quickly smash them. All right, we'll scoop those garlic, smash, let's put the smashed garlic cloves in. And smash them just releases the oils and the flavor, adds a little extra to it rather than not smashing them. Other than that, we've got a couple carrots here. Rough chop, ends and all, in the pot. Same thing for onion. I'm just going to slice it in half. Outer skin paper and all, it's going to get strained off. There's flavor in there, believe it or not. Lemons, slice it in half. We'll get the juice out of there, though. Alright, that's our main ingredients we're putting in today's seafood stock. Use as much or as little as you want, depending on what you have on hand. Other than that, let's do a little bit of seasoning. I got a few bay leaves here I'm going to toss in. I'm going to do just a bit of salt. You don't want to overly salt your stocks because it's a lot easier to add salt when you're cooking your final meal and you don't want a salty stock to begin with. That's hard to control later on. So a little bit of kosher salt or Himalayan pink crystals. And I'm going to do just a little bit here of some black peppercorns. All I'm going to do, top this off with water, bring it up to a boil. Once boiling, drop that down to a simmer and let this go for about one to two hours. We'll come back and check on it and see how it's turning out. folks welcome back our seafood stock has boiled for about two hours went ahead and strained out the solids set them off to the side to throw away once they cool off I stole one cup of our seafood stock from our pot while it continues to cool down it's too hot to work with at the moment so we're gonna let that continue to cool down before we portion out containers so we can use for uh, later on different recipes and whatnot but I stole a cup for now while we cook our rice now, you don't have to season your rice with seafood stock. You can just do water, you can do chicken stock, but every little bit helps to make this recipe that much better. So why not use some of that delicious seafood stock we just made to season our rice and cook it off. So I've got a couple cups of rice in my rice cooker insert here. I've already rinsed it 20 times over till the water ran clear. We'll add our seafood stock. I'm gonna throw this in the rice cooker, we'll let it cook. While the seafood stock continues to cool off, we'll come back, we'll portion out that seafood stock, we'll get some in the freezer, we'll get some in containers, and we'll get some set aside for a shrimp etouffee, so stay tuned. 
All right, folks, you can see in front of me, we got a ton of seafood stock using some scraps, a little bit of water, and two hours of time today. Besides the one cup we already stole for the rice we're cooking, we got two, four, six, eight cups I'm going to be putting the lid on, throwing in the deep freezer until next time I need to cook a seafood recipe requiring stock. Other than those eight cups, three more cups right here for today's shrimp etouffee recipe. I don't know what else to say, folks, but remember next time you're in the kitchen prepping celery, carrots, herbs, other veggies, onions, stuff like that, save those scraps, toss them in a baggie, throw them in the freezer. This right here is a ton of money we saved and a ton more flavor without all the excess salt and preservatives you're going to get from buying store-bought pre-made stocks. Now it's seafood stock today, maybe tomorrow it's chicken stock, maybe next week it's beef stock. It's all the same principle, so keep these things in mind when you're prepping your meals and your recipes. Save those scraps, folks. It just... It makes some great stock and a lot of extra flavor in your meals. I'm going to get this cleaned up. We'll put everything away. We'll come back and we'll start making our shrimp etouffee. All right, folks, welcome back. Let's get to making this shrimp etouffee. Now, I've already peeled these shrimp. We used those peels earlier to make our shrimp stock, our seafood stock. I've had them sitting in the fridge in a colander over a bowl to strain any excess liquids. I've gone ahead and dumped the excess liquids that did come off of these. So I'm going to go ahead and dump these shrimp into the bowl. Now all we need to do is season these. Now I'm going to keep things simple today and we're just going to use Old Bay seasoning. It's a classic seasoning that goes with seafood, shrimp, everything. So why change it up? Let's just use some Old Bay. So I'm going to just get a couple teaspoons in here, a couple tablespoons maybe. And then we'll go ahead and toss the shrimp, make sure everything's well coated. All right, looking good. And for the time being, we can just set this to the side. We'll come back to this shrimp in just a few minutes. All right, folks, as you can see, I've already went ahead and prepped all our veggies for this today. We're going to be using some celery, some bell pepper. I went ahead and pre-made my Cajun seasoning. You can check the link in the description below. That will see on my website with this mix itself, or you can use a pre-made Cajun or Creole seasoning of your own. We've got our onion diced up, and I got a little bit of flour because we will be making a roux. The first step we need to do is melt some butter in this large pan. Once that butter is melted, we'll go ahead and throw in our diced celery. We'll let that go for two to three minutes just to take that hard, crisp bite out of it before adding our bell pepper. Bell pepper only needs about a minute or so before we toss in our Cajun seasoning that we pre-made. Now this Cajun seasoning, like I said before, will be linked below. Otherwise, use a pre-made Cajun seasoning, Creole seasoning, whatever you have in the cabinet at home. Once those aromas really start to come out, you start to smell those spices, we'll throw in an onion just for a minute or so, and right before it becomes translucent, we're going to throw in our flour to make a roux. Now today we're going for a peanut butter the milk chocolate colored roux, somewhere in that light to medium range roux. You can make yours as light or as dark as you like. It's all personal preference. I like that middle range ground for this shrimp etouffee recipe. So that being said, let's get this stuff sauteed and get these veggies ready. We'll come back when the roux is ready to go and move on to the next step. All right, folks, you just saw in that cutaway, we got our veggies sauteed. We got that roux started up. It's a medium to chocolate colored roux there. Give us a lot of color and flavor. The next step is very controversial, whether you're Cajun or Creole or somewhere between, and I'm talking about diced tomatoes. Now, I'm going to use a can of hot Rotel today. This is Creole style. They use tomatoes in their cooking. Cajuns are going to leave this out. It's up to you, personal preference. I like a little tomato in there. I think it makes the meal go a little bit farther. So... I'm going to add our tomatoes in. We'll stir that in. All right, next step, we're going to deglaze this with that seafood stock we made earlier. We're going to put the whole thing in. Let this cook away for, oh, five or six minutes just to start to thicken up. That roux we got in here should thicken the seafood stock up quick. So three or four minutes. We'll let this thicken up, become a nice thick gravy. We'll come back for the last couple of ingredients, throw our shrimp in, and we'll be eating good.
All right, folks, you just saw that. That gravy formed and thickened up real nice. It's smelling amazing in here. A couple last ingredients we want to add. A little bit of Worcestershire sauce, of course. Love the stuff myself, so I'm going heavy. And finally, to kick it up a notch, as Emma would say, give it a little bam. Some hot sauce. We'll give this a stir. It's getting nice and thick. The last thing we need to do is add our shrimp back to our pot here, finish everything off. Now I've killed the heat. There should be enough residual heat in this etouffee to cook this shrimp. So I'm just gonna add the shrimp in. Stir that around. We're gonna let this shrimp cook for about four to six minutes, however long it takes, depending on how hot your pot was. If it's not finishing cooking, by all means, turn it back on to low to medium. Finish cooking your shrimp. It should only take a couple minutes. I'm going to let this all cool down. We'll plate it up, make it look pretty. We'll add that rice we cooked earlier to it. Make a nice bowl. Give it a nice garnish with some green onion. Give it a taste test. See how we did. Did we nail this shrimp etouffee today, folks? I think so. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Give it a try. folks as you saw in those previous clips we let the shrimp finish cook until it turned pink just till it was done it is plated up it's looking delicious we got that seafood stock infused rice in the middle of our bowl making it a nice pretty beautiful presentation but you know what looks are only half the battle let's give it a taste test and see if we accomplish what we set out to do today by making the best shrimp etouffee let's give it a taste test start with a bite of the rice and a little bit of the gravy We got some heat in there today, folks. I can taste it. Rice, you can just taste that seafood stock coming through just slightly. Just enough to remind you that we put it in there, but not overpowering where it overtakes the rice itself. Now we've got the rice and the gravy tasted. The main attraction is that shrimp. Perfectly cooked. Not chewy at all. Just a perfect, nice mouthfeel. Nice bit of texture in there. A lot of great heat. Overall, great seafood flavor. I can honestly say this might be one of the best versions I've made. So, that being said, I better give it one more full-on bite. Let's get some of them sautéed veggies. A little bit of rice. piece of shrimp. Folks, this is the stuff that Creole dreams are made of. It is just absolutely that delicious. We spent two hours today making that seafood stock from scratch using leftover vegetable bits and pieces and scraps that we threw in the freezer. We peeled our shrimp, used those shells, added those lobster shells from the previous meal. Spend the time when you're in the kitchen, folks. Save those leftovers. Don't throw them in the trash. They can make some amazing stocks that truly make these dishes ten times better than using water or chicken stock or something you're buying from the store because... That little bit of effort goes a long way when it comes to flavor. If you like what I made here today, be sure to check the links in the description below. I'll make sure to link the seafood stock, the shrimp stock, however you want to make it. There'll be the shrimp etouffee recipe itself. Of course, tweak it to your own likings. If you like it a little more spicy, put some more peppers in there. If you want to tame it down a little bit, pull back on the cayenne. The uh, Cajun seasoning we used, I didn't really talk a whole lot about it. It's onion, garlic paprika, white pepper, black pepper, cayenne, a few other uh, basic, simple staple ingredients you should have in your pantry. If not, like I said, use your own Cajun seasoning that you like to use at home. If you like what I made here today, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you liked or did not like about it. Are you a Creole or Cajun cooker? Do those tomatoes belong in there or do they not? Be sure to subscribe for more great content just like this. Otherwise, Mike here signing off. Until next time, folks, just keep cooking.